Robot Core is a new innovative robot controller designed to interface with both the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino open source platform. This board interfaces with the many actuators and sensors of a robot to the main controller. With this board, you can control two motors, eight servos, two Dynamixel smart servo ports, and have access to eight 12-bit analog inputs without needing five additional boards to hook up. The board has many other features, including a powerful onboard six amp DC to DC converter, so you can power your Pi or Arduino off a single power source. This simplifies the process of building robots considerably. And with the daisy chaining ability of the Dynamixel smart servos, this enables you to build the robots that you wanna build, including multi-joint bipeds, arms, and even hexapod robots. And of course, no board would be complete without the software to run it. So we put a lot of time and energy behind both the libraries and the GUI examples for both the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino microcontroller. So why the Kickstarter? We need your help to bring the board to life. With your donations, we can do a much larger production run. This will allow us to offer the board at a much lower cost to you. If you are interested in one of these unique robot controllers, please help by either spreading the word or donating below. This controller is different because it was designed and built by people who actually build robots. And we founded Machina for car nerds because we are car nerds. When we started out, we were buying parts and bolting them on. Eventually this got boring because we didn't actually understand what was going on. At least with mechanical things, you can see them working. But as soon as you add electronics, you can't see in. You have to either trust whoever made it or become a car nerd. We want you to stop just bolting things on. Start understanding and creating. That's why we build Machina. Machina lets you into the inner workings of your car. It's kind of like rooting or jailbreaking your phone. Once you're in, the possibilities are endless. Modern cars are controlled by a system of computers, passing information back and forth. Here's what it looks like when your car is running. Somewhere in this mass of data is the engine's RPM and gear selection. If we want to create a shift light, all we need to do is isolate those pieces of information and program Machina to tell us when to shift. Machina not only listens to your car, but it can talk to it too. Let's say you want to unlock it from a mile away. Machina can do that. Machina can also do more complicated things, like retune your entire ECU for a new fuel type. The question really shouldn't be, what can Machina do? It should be, what are you willing to learn how to do? Machina works with most modern cars. Machina is inexpensive, compact, easy to learn, flexible to your situation, wirelessly connectable, and most importantly, open source. At its core, Machina is an interface that connects to your car through the OBD2 port or a wired connection using every common protocol. Machina's interface mates easily to our processor board which is based on Arduino, making it easy to work with. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, there's something for you to build and create. Makina lets you get back to the original intention of hot rodding. Make it better, make it fun, make it yours. You can do this and you don't have to do it alone. In fact, there's an entire community of people who love cars and understand technology. Hi, I'm John from the UK. My background is in software design and development. I'm one of the CAVE developers. I like to mess around with electronics and to build cool stuff like these arcades that you see around here. Um, I'm well aware of the problems that people face when they try to integrate the control panels with the computer systems and the consoles that they use them with. Um, Kevin and Bruno share my passions for arcades. So together we made this. It's called CAVE. It's a cool device. We're really excited about it. Let me show you why. So here's one of my Bartop Arcade cabinets. It has working controls. This arcade has an Xbox console inside, like this one. Some people hack the game pads to interface with the controls. This often requires difficult soldering. We don't need to do that anymore. There's a groundbreaking alternative. This control panel is powered by a Cade. Let me show you inside. There's the Cade. The wiring from the arcade joysticks and buttons connects to the screw terminals. The brains of the Cade is here. So this is a fully functional prototype of the Cade hardware. And it has two major components. 
First of all, we have a small USB programmable microcontroller. And we, we have the CAD software running on a couple of different boards, and this is the one that we've settled on for our initial run. Uh, really happy with the price and performance on it. And it's a, it's a bit small. We actually had, had experimented with using really small terminals directly on the AVR, but we found out that you had to use little teeny tiny screwdrivers, and they were really hard to get in and out to, to program. So we have this prototype here where we've taken the microcontroller and we actually have a board that you slide it right on there. And the intention for this board is that it would stay inside of your fight stick or your arcade cabinet. And if you need to do any kind of programming, you can just pull off the AVR, do the programming, put the microcontroller right back on. So this part stays in your cabinet. It's with full-size terminals. i uh, found some really good quality terminals that we're very happy with. So we've got another, another prototype that we did. Um, it functions really well. This is a, another revision where we're, we're changing some of the screw holes. And we actually have a, a third revision that just went off to the fabrication house. And uh, that seems to be the one that's going to go out on the Kickstarter. So a little more space to mount, do the mounting and a um, little more space for the screw terminals, and we're, we're really happy with that. We hope you'll take a few minutes and take a close look at the project and consider supporting us. We've really surpassed all of our initial goals. We have a device and software that we're really very proud of, and it's functional right now. I'm actually going to play a game here in a couple of minutes as soon as I'm done with this video. There's no lag. It's easy to set up. It can be configurable if you want it to be. You can hook it up to a PlayStation one day and put it on your PC or your Android tablet the next. Hi Kickstarter, my name is John Staskovich. This is the MIDI widget. It's a device that allows you to control almost anything in the real world via MIDI messages sent from your computer or from a MIDI controller. It can function as the brain for a music robot, a lighting controller, a guitar effect switcher, or lots of other things. The MIDI widget accepts MIDI input via a traditional 5-pin MIDI connector or via a direct USB connection to a computer. No special drivers are required. It appears as a standard MIDI port in your favorite music software. It also works with the iPad camera connection kit. In response to MIDI input, the MIDI widget generates 24 independent 5-volt logic signals. Add your own relays or driver circuitry to control just about anything. No programming is required. Use the MIDI widget configurator software to select the behavior for each output. The outputs can respond to MIDI note, CC, program change, and sync messages. The MIDI widget can be powered over USB or with a separate power supply or battery. The MIDI widget design is already complete and has been beta tested. If the Kickstarter project succeeds, production will begin and the entire design will be open sourced. Hi, my name is Andrew Lai and I would like to introduce the hackable and smart Raspberry Pi switch which I have used in various of my projects and this is one of them as you can see here the Raspberry Pi is mounted inside and I've got the switch mounted in front in the face plate so I'd like to demonstrate how to switch on uh, by the way this is a, um, a earlier prototype of the Pi switch before I added the, uh, the the infrared receiver. So to switch on, just press this button here. Um, so let's wait for the, the Pi switch to, to switch. <laughs> so let's wait for the Pi to switch on. While waiting for the Pi switch on, I'd like to demonstrate um, an early prototype. Um, of the switch in here we've got uh, a standard micro USB power input and here I've got the the standard USB a female port for the power output into the Pi and here there's the connector um, the purpose of this is to uh, signal the Pi switch to switch off as well as monitoring whether the Pi has is already um, fully gracefully shut down. Um, in front we've got an LED um, indicator and a, uh, and a, and the button, and I'm 
currently in the process of adding this uh, infrared receiver in the front front as well. Um, and by the way, the for the final product, the relay would be a lot thinner, um, so you can easily mount it. Okay, so the now the Pi is now switched on. As you can see, um, to switch off, just press the but same button again, and now it's currently shutting down. Um, as indicated by the blinking LED and now it's monitoring and check whether the Pi is fully switched off and as you can hear there's a click sound of the relay which cuts the power and now the Pi is fully switched off so how the, the infrared remote control works. In here I've got a monitor connected to a Pi and in here this is the Raspberry Pi switch prototype connected to a, an infrared receiver. The, in the final product the infrared receiver will be combined with the Raspberry Pi switch. So I would like to demonstrate Using the remote, I'm going to press on, and as you can see, the LED starts lighting up, and the Pi is now booting. The Pi switch is connected to the Pi via a, a normal um, micro USB cable. But I've added a, an LED in the middle just to for me to debug. So the Raspberry Pi is now booted up and now we can try switching off. So I'm going to press the off button. Now the Pi switch LED has now blink is now blinking, which indicates it was waiting for the Pi to switch off, and now it's fully switched off, and the relay has been shut down, so the power has been cut off.